He went yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Did you? And he said that they're altering the course, the no. construction. Oh, really? You've never been there? No. Of course, you've never been here. Before. I've never been here before. Well, that's wonderful. That's right. When you were a nine-year-old milkman up the street here, did you ever think of your future, or did you think you had a future? Well, I don't think it, at nine one thinks in terms of uh, your future, to be honest. Uh, 1939, one was talking then about the main topics were, was the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter how privileged or underprivileged or whatever your circumstances are or where, um, somehow until you move on or move out or do some things different, as you don't have anything to compare it with, you just think it's absolutely normal. And do you think you were you happy then? It's your best memory, or um, teenage years, early teenage? No, not madly. I mean, the teenage. Well, that that side of the work side I liked with it because mm -hmm. I then got introduced to the horses and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And it was a. It's, one realizes in retrospect how different it must be for like same age kids now. None of the men, the young men anyway, were around. They were all in the services. That's right. And the older guys were in munitions or, you know, training for the home guard or something. And 14-year-olds, uh, like I became at the time, and this friend of mine, Danny Fraser, we had horses mm. and were delivering milk, doing the men's jobs. Mm. You know, a lot of teenagers, I'm thinking about them today because they're in the news so much lately. Mm. You have so much self-confidence that I'm sure you've gotten over the years of being successful. What point did it kick in for you? Did you start feeling pretty good about yourself and... Confident. Well, I mean, I got into the Navy and uh, I, I was signed for 12 years and I was out after three with ulcers. Mm -hmm. And so one certainly wasn't full of confidence. Mm -hmm. And also uh, academically, one was uh, zilch. And uh, so one kind of had to uh, educate completely. And it was to get, and at the same time, one went to bodybuilding. So I think one got a kind of combination of an education and uh, something to do with the physical side as well. And started that's, feeling good about yourself. Yeah. And, and then you're a nude model. You better feel good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Are any of the girls ever looking you up when you come back to town? I drew him. No, I haven't actually. <laughs> Stay away to from date. <laughs> but uh, I think it's around then that, you, that one starts to uh, understand and uh, also. There is nothing better than the exposure to lots of other cultures, yes, true. lots of other different people. I mean, to go to, I went to Australia, I went to America, mm -hmm. and uh, if, if you can't handle that, then uh, you, you see what happens to people that stay. And the difference between this and, uh, and uh, Thomas Wolfe is you, you can't go home again. Are you still having a good time doing movies? Yeah. As long as you don't do too many in a row, is that what it is? Well, in the middle uh, of this one uh, was a very, very arduous, heavy schedule, and with the two hats was making it difficult because it, starting dates and all the rest of it, accommodating everything because I was on both sides of the team. Yeah. You know, producing and uh, starring in it, and uh, sometimes it's a tail that's wagging the dog. But you're still finding time for golf because your wife told me that you just beat somebody very badly somewhere in the Bahamas, or they beat you. Who won that game? I think I won. You think you won. I think you always win. <laughs> this man always wins. Don't worry about that. No, it's not true. I, could, I can't imagine you losing. Thank you, sir. Yes. Great to see, nice you to see you again. Right. Thank you for the shot. Absolutely.